Hello, my name is Adam Bean and welcome to the virtual life hacking, life hacking uh, micro profile on Kubernetes session. So a uh, live virtual pre-recorded session. And uh, it is a part of the J4K, Java for Kubernetes IO conference. And um, so let's start with the slides. So uh, what I would like to do is, is uh, the following. So um, I would like to, to use a micro profile to build a small app, use uh, some APIs, and with a little bit of luck, push them at the end uh, to Kubernetes. And um, I'm a consultant, uh, freelancer, sometimes I speak at conferences, and um, but uh, mostly I'm working in projects, spend my time in projects, and I use Java for 25 years and still really enjoying it. And um, so I write a blog, which is a notepad, just a, you know short thoughts, almost like a microblogging. Then AHEX.io is a set of uh, uh, video courses um, about Java and web. And AHEX Live is our virtual workshops, uh, whole day workshops usually, and uh, very similar to this one, but longer. And AHEX FM are uh, podcasts. Um, my podcast, uh, uh, we have already, uh, 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 we have more than 100 episodes already, uh, are already uh, recorded. Okay, so let's start. Um, so, if there are any questions left, uh, what, the first Monday of the month, I'm answering all the questions. Um, so you can just put your question on the GitHub gist, and I will answer the question once a month, 8 p.m. CET. It's first Monday of the month, 8, 8 p.m. CET. So, and um, if you would like to see more, there is going to be uh, the virtual AirHacks Live course in December, micro profile with Quarkus, and as well, uh, web components without frameworks. So this is what I usually doing in backend, thin Java without dependencies, you know, for uh, sustainable uh, applications and uh, the same ideas um, I'm applying in the front end. Um, we are not using any frameworks, just uh, stick with standards. Okay, so first, what is a micro profile? And uh, so this is the micro profile page. And uh, what a micro profile comes with is a set of APIs and they're like, the first layer APIs with are uh, tied to CNCF or clouds, and the uh, lowest layer are actually Java 8 APIs or Jakarta EA APIs. So the first layer is like the um, base functionality, and this are the this is the I would say cloud or distributed computing added value. So what's nice in MicroProfile, so if you click on the uh, more information and spec, for instance HTML, you get all these specs. Um, so it's very easy to access these specs. And uh, and they uh, you can directly fetch them from GitHub with uh, um, this is usually HTML or PDF. Okay, if you would like to have some more examples, so what I did is I pre-recorded a workshop. This is the online workshop uh, on demand, so video course with eight hours, uh, roughly eight hours uh, content apps with micro profile. But uh, the entire example, so every episode is a commit. Uh, is on uh, GitHub, so there are uh, roughly I think 190 yeah, commits, uh, commits, and um, yeah, you can download the course if you like or rent it for um, yeah. Now, um, what I will do at the end of the show, I will uh, push uh, Quarkus to Kubernetes. So what I already did, I used OpenShift a lot on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested more in that, look at this. So the main difference is um, uh, OpenShift is a little bit more convenient and so brings already the uh, the the uh, routing and the build process and on Kubernetes, you have to, to do it by yourself. So that's the main difference between both. Okay, now, uh, so now back to the content. And uh, so what is micro profile and um, what about the setup? And this is, by the way, uh, yeah, we already covered the micro profile and this is the very, very last slide. And if you're interested in online content, I also maintaining uh, the uh, meetup.com AirHacks group so if you have uh, with lots of online conferences, so which are mostly free Java user groups and stuff like that. Okay, so now um, let's talk about the setup first. So how to start with a project. And um, today I would like to use um, Quarkus. And um, let's do this. I would like to call, this is the group ID J4K. And the Quarkus project is going to be, uh, what we would like to build is, I think video conferencing is a thing. So if you build, you know, a video conference app is probably the uh, uh, this what you can get immediately rich. So um, video conferencing 
platform. Uh, VCP uh, version fine and yes and it actually doesn't matter but go with that. So video conferencing platform VCP nice name. So let's open this Visual Studio code and so now the project is set up. So uh, there's only one micro profile API which are actually using and this API is uh, rest easy. So a Jax rest from Jakarta 8 and what I we forget about the tests for today. So there will be no testing. And um, then would like to delete the tests. Okay, um, now what we have here, flat structure, hello resource with J4K. So this J4K is fine. What's not fine, then inside the first package, we already have the content hello resource. What usually happens in projects, we are thinking in domain objects. So we are structuring the entire system according to, uh, to domain principles. So, so visual, vis, uh, video, what is the name? Video conference platform. So if you think about that, so at least what I would like to suggest what we would need is, so first go to source main Java. And then J4K. And then I would like to create a folder with and the folder or folders. And I think um, we need meetings, something like meetings. Then what we need is uh, organizers or let's say, yeah, admins, shorter. Meetings, admins, probably... Uh, attendee uh, or let's say recordings recordings and um, just basically it I think we can start with that so let's see and uh, what we got is admins meetings recordings so and each of these uh, meetings we um, uh, of the folders we get basically the same structure so I would like to switch to let's say recordings and this recording I would like to have within the recordings the following uh, I would like to have the boundary control entity package and within the, um, let's say, admins, let's try that. So in admins, um, maybe everything but not boundary. Okay. So, and um, so if you take a look now, we have the uh, admins, control entity, and recordings, boundary control entity. So what this means is, um, so the data flows from top to bottom. So it means boundary is like the API to the outside world. So it's the boundary of the system. So it contains classes which communicate, which implement the protocol and communicate with the outside world. Some something like hexagonal architecture, but it has just one, one how to call it, one uh, one side. So um, then we have control, which is reusable logic, and entity is the data. So um, now let's implement something. So I would like to implement uh, a recording. So let's do this. Um, a class is recording or record um, or just why not video um, video Java, and this video Java comes with at least title. So we already have it. And now um, what I will need is as well here a recordings resource. So this is convention. And this recording resource will return a path with recordings. Recordings. So that's the path. And um, so now what I would like to do is just for test purposes, I would like to expose the recording and see whether it is uh, not recording, you see, video. Um, and this is like, uh, let's say, let's go with that. And um, I would like to expose that with, with, um, produces and what I would like to do is to return a media type and 
uh, application JSON. So, and then just return new video and the title is J4K Virtual Hacks. So uh, now we have it. The video has to be imported from the entity package. No, um, it has to be imported as well, but the other problem we have is uh, there is no constructor. And I would like to have a constructor for convenience. And this is the title, title and title equals title. That's basically it. And we also need a default constructor for later constructor. If you, if you would like to save the message, we need a default constructor. Otherwise, we get an error. The container won't be able to deserialize the message. So, okay, now we have it. A simple uh, video and the recording is now able. So the video is already imported and we could actually see whether it is working, but it wouldn't work. Why not? Because what we have to do is we have to add some extensions. And uh, what I would like to do is to um, add the REST Easy JSONB extension, which um, which allows REST Easy to serialize and deserialize JSONB objects um, into uh, into into POJOs JSONB POJOs into into JSON. And uh, let's go with Matrix. We will use Matrix for sure, and uh, fault tolerance maybe, and a REST client could be also interesting. And um, yeah, this let's let's go with with this first. And um, so now all the dependencies are installed. So what I can do is I can just say Quarkus Dev, and uh, what also we should forgot about that health is also healthy services are good. So add health as well. And um, yeah, we added the health. Now, um, now start the server. Or the runtime. So now um, all the dependencies are already set up. And what I would like to do is just to open another shell and see how it works. Localhost 8080 slash uh, recordings recordings and it seems to work. So um, it's uh, uh, already surprising that it works that well. What I also would like to add now is the open API, um, open API, because it's probably the easiest way to test the application. So the open API is added and sometimes It hangs. Open API. So now and uh, now let's start the server. And um, so now it's hopefully installed. And what we could do is to test it immediately. I will need a browser for this purpose, and just open. So we have localhost 8080 slash swagger UI slash and we have the swagger UI and this is the old uh, hello but with get recordings tried out we can actually see um, so we get the we got the recordings back. So now what's also nice we can use um, Kubernetes uh, specific configuration or Docker or cloud native, if you will. And what I can do is I can actually add a message, string uh, message, and the message is going to be injected, inject the message, and it is going to be a config property, config property with uh, the default value is uh, j hello j4k and the name is going to be message 
I write it in uppercase because uh, this is usually what happens on Kubernetes. All the environment entries on Docker are uppercase, the environment entries. So, okay, um, so I have it. And what I would like to do is, and before we do this, actually, just um, I would like to create another class called uh, Video Store Java Store or Storage. And this is going to be request scoped from CDI request scoped. And what I would like to do is just to do this in the other class, because usually what shouldn't happen is we should not write too much logic in the resource because it's not good testable. The issue is uh, if we pass here headers or return a response, if you would write a unit test, there is a lot of work to do, like, you know, unpack the responses or mock the headers. And this is uh, a way better to put all the logic into a dedicated POJO. So let's do this. So the injection happens here. And uh, what I also would like to do is to inject the store, to inject the uh, video storage, video storage, storage. And um, and storage and the storage is going to return the video get video. So and this is not exactly right from the restful perspective because this get should return a collection of videos, but I mean for now it doesn't matter. Um, so let's create a, or, or let's say, last recording, so like this. And um, so I would like to create a method, and um, now I'm here, and here I can just say j4k virtual hacks, and um, with that we can just create a message with that and uh, say message message plus ah. configured message okay configured message so now it is better we have the configured message plus, uh, plus that and we would like to import again because it was copied this inject and config property. So now we have a little service and this recordings resource just calls that. So this is nicer, just organize, just organize the imports and looks better. So we have the um, inject video storage and we uh, just use that here. So let's see whether it is actually working. And for this purpose, we can switch to the browser again, reload that and say, I would like to see the recordings. So go to recordings and try it out, execute. And we see, hello, J4K, J4K. Okay, this was not really nice or helpful. So something like this should be better and just execute it again. And now we get hello J4K virtual hex. So it looks better. So now if you take a look here at the end, this video is just a title. So we have no idea uh, whether, you know, uh, what it actually means. So what we can do, we can provide additional hint um, what it actually is. And for this purpose, I can use the open API schema annotation. So if I just use schema, schema, and just say, this is going to be an example. And the example is live virtual pre-recorded, recorded hacking, something like that. Okay, um, and if I will just retry that again, just reload. We will see that the video now comes with example, which is somehow, this is really useful. So this is the open API fully integrated with Swagger UI and uh, what you can do with it 
is um, add additional constraints. You could say this is required, optional, and add, for instance, examples, which is which is actually great because it shows how to use uh, a video. And if we had, for instance, a uh, another method, let's do this. Um, save recording, and I would like to save the video. post and then I will have to say uh, not produces rather than consumes so this is going to be consumes so now um, just go the sysrace so if we so just reload that and we should see we should see the post swagger ui get post this is what i expected and you can see uh, example this is the sample and what you also see is uh, try it out it uh, suggests the title but what if, let's say, the video has a hash and the hash is uh, like, you know, uh, let's say public string string hash. And with that, if I would try that, then as you can see, it also requires the hash and it will actually ask me to provide the hash here, which... Um, and the hash, what's so? And the hash um, is actually should be never required. So, and what we can do is we can actually add additional information. And for me, it should be hidden because uh, no one should know that actually a hash exists from the open API perspective. So now if I switch back to here and reload that, so what we will see is, oh, not um, hidden, true should be, sorry. So uh, what we should see, wait a second, uh, I would like just to do this. It's easier. So, uh, so now if I reload that, it won't require me to provide the uh, the hash. I only see the title. So OpenAPI is useful to make the um, REST API directly more useful to developers. So, and what I did is I uh, added the uh, OpenAPI annotations directly on the JSON B object. So now, um, what we have right now is the following. So we have the JSONB, which is exposed via video storage. But let's assume, for unknown reasons, the uh, video is uh, not available, the storage. Sometimes it throws an error. And um, so let's do this. Let's say, in our case, there is no video. So what we can do is, uh, I would just throw, let's say, uh, illegal state exception state exception and it says uh, no storage is inconsistent and of course we need the new okay looks good and we don't need that so with that of course I would get an error so if I would try to get the last recording and we can do this just with the curl, we don't need the browser. So curl localhost 8080. And uh, what was the recording recordings? I get here an ugly error. So what I could do is I could say, okay, this is not nice, but what about uh, retrying a couple of times? Let's say two, two times max. Oh, first import that 
and then we need uh, max retries too. And in case it doesn't work, I would like to have a fallback. And the fallback, fallback is the keynote. <laughs> Why not? Um, fallback method is the uh, default video. And you will have to see the keynote, which is just uh, st stored somewhere else. A fallback video, default or fallback. Ah, let's keep default video. And uh, what I would like to return here is the keynote. Return um, new video. And this is going to be the keynote. So um, let's see whether this get better. Here it is, title, keynote. Uh, keynote is the title. So, looks good. So what this is, is this fault, fault torrents. And um, so I can play a little bit with the... Um, uh, annotations and what I could also do let's say my recordings resource is throttled because uh, I am not allowed you know to fetch too many videos at the same time which can be actually uh, absolutely true here so what I would like to do is to protect the method get so how to do that is I can use another annotation and I would like to use to call the annotation um, not call the annotation, I have to use the annotation, and this is bulkhead. So the bulkhead annotation, and with the bulkhead annotation, I can actually say only two um, invocations, concurrent invocations are allowed, and if someone has more than that, then I would like to use uh, another fallback method, and this method is overloaded, and in case of overload, what I would like to do is to provide a response, and I think the method has to be have to have the same signature. Usually, I always use response, so in this particular case, it would be response and response. Uh, okay, like this exactly, and just do the just do it a little bit nicer. Video and here put the video built so we have it and then we need a response with overloaded overloaded and in this particular case uh, there is nothing overloaded except we are saying return return um, return response status 503 and uh, we can provide additional information in the header and I say reason too many concurrent get requests and build. Okay, so nice. Now we have it, so recording and overload it and um, and what I also would like to do is I would use at the same time, actually, I would like to measure the concurrency. And this is called concurrent gauge. So I can apply here annotation with the name concurrent gauge. And this comes, I have just to import that. And this comes with microprofimetric. So what this does is I, I, I actually will see how many concurrent calls are, uh, are active. And if there will be more than two, I would see that this uh, redirects to the, um, sorry, the fallback redirects to overloaded. Okay, and I think we have to make this a little bit slower. Um, I don't know how, sm how slow, let's say 50 milliseconds should be enough. And then... Just swallow the exception. Okay. Now, um, what it means is the following. Now, let's start start with a so first localhost eighty eighty recordings. So, title keynote, and let's see what is actually the. Um,
what are the metrics and what I would like to do is just to use browser because sometimes it is nicer and so uh, what we see this is the uh, recording max gauge so it's nothing uh, calls fail total so this is the uh, they are the fallback on last recording video storage and um, this is our our basic uh, our, our basic metrics so let's see what happens if I will launch a stress test so a worker which is like Apache benchmark but it works better on Mac so this is the only and uh, if you have Apache uh, web server installed just use the AB and I would like to launch the test, let's say, for 30 seconds with uh, five concurrent uh, threads and five connections. Um, connections. And this was localhost 8080 recordings, 8080 slash recordings. Verka minus D, let 30 seconds, minus C, let's say, concurrency of five and minus T, are five and then I would like to call localhost 8080 and then recordings recordings so and now the test is running and let's see what happens here so we see recording current two and uh, unfortunately the gauge was never higher than two but let's see whether we will manage to do localhost 8080 recordings and uh, we don't get anything and as you can see we get the 503 service not available which is right and now we are back to normal mode because you know the uh the uh stress test stopped so this is a like really nice full bulkhead um and um so what we have is already we use a little bit of micro profile matrix config uh, open API, uh, fault tolerance, and uh, what we skipped is JSON Web Token and Open Tracing. Both, if you're interested, go to uh, Micro Profile Training or YouTube channel. There, uh, there are lots of free content. But um, what I would like to try right now is to um, to um, deploy the application to Kubernetes. So how to do that? So um, magically, we get a list of properties. And the list of properties is required to deploy to Kubernetes. And uh, what I already have is I created a cluster up front with uh, three nodes, the smallest available machines on Amazon. And I would like to push the service to Amazon. And um, now uh, to keep it realistic, I would like to push the service to a private Docker registry. So this is uh, my registry. And uh, then what I also would like to do is I would like to expose a load balancer, a Kubernetes load balancer, with additional information. So if you search for AWS load balancer type, this is like a AWS specific annotation. And I would like to have the application load balancer, which uh, communicates with the instances. So in order to make it work, what I need is I need a Kubernetes extension. Kubernetes extension and and uh, JIP extension, which is a Docker builder. So in contrary to uh, OpenShift, Kubernetes just requires a Docker image. So we will have to build the image by ourselves. So takes long So do it again. So what I need is again, I need the Kubernetes, Kubernetes, and I need the JIP. Okay, now it's faster. And what happened is this has nothing to do anymore with microprofile. It's just a convenient thing because what it does is it uh, comes with this what the two additional annotations, Quarkus Kubernetes and Quarkus Container Image Chip. And the other ones were uh, SmallRai Open API and SmallRai is like the reference implementation from, uh, from uh, open source uh, microprofile implementation. Okay. So now, now we have it, and uh, what I would like to do is just to run it, clean install. And what should happen is, in the target, we should get a ready-to-use Kubernetes configuration. 
And uh, what it's what it says is uh, the repository with name ehex vcp does not doesn't exist in the registry with ID here. So let's see what is the issue. And if we go to ECR the repository, we only have one uh, repository ehex slash Quarkus Kubernetes. So I will have to create a uh, repository name is ehex. And now I have to be really careful. VCP create repository. Okay, now I have the VCP registry. And uh, so just try it again. Where is my ID here? Just go for that. Now it takes a little bit longer, which is a really good sign. So what happens be behind the scenes, the Docker container is built and pushed the first time to the registry. So it takes a really long time because the entire image is pushed. But because of uh, Quarkus layering, the second push is significantly faster. So now it worked out. And in the registry here on um, Amazon in Airhex VCP, we have now a deployed the, our image. One zero snapshot, which is taken from Maven. This was the job from JIP. So, and uh, what JIP did, it created a container, yeah, a Docker container, and pushed to my private Docker registry with my AWS keys. And now it is on Amazon. Okay. So now, but if we take this was the first part. So this was the um, this is the group. It's AirHex. This is what this is the what's the you know the the, the prefix of the Docker container. AWS is my user. And uh, push means I have to push on every build. And then the second part is Kubernetes. And what I would like to do is expose means I need a load balancer. In OpenShift, the routing comes with OpenShift. So there is no uh, load balancer. Uh, it is called ingress. So now the ingress is going to be uh, created for me. The type is load balancer. I need two replicas of my microservice. So there will be two in container. And I always would like to refresh the image. And this are Amazon specific. This is Amazon specific configuration. So now the interesting part is there is a Kubernetes folder here, and Kubernetes YAML, and this conf uh, was created from the Java metadata by uh, the the extension, and it created here as you can see. So we have the metrics, we have the Prometheus port eighty eighty, and so forth. So it created. Um, even health check, health ready and health uh, live. So we don't have the health check, so we'll have to fix that in a second. And this is the entire configuration from Kubernetes. And it it, it ends with ingress, um, the load balancer. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to tell kubectl uh, apply minus F target Kubernetes and the a little bit of YAML. So, and now, as you can see, what happened is it created the service account, service deployment, and extensions. Now, if I ask Kubernetes, uh, give me, please, the deployments, I get deployments. This is the VCP, and the Quarkus Kubernetes was Hello World example two weeks ago. So, um, I have that. And then um, what uh, I also would like to see is uh, QB, Kubernetes... Also, kubectl uh, get ingress, and what I have here is the uh, VCP ingress. So I can ask kubectl uh, get ingress v VCP, and this is the address. And I can ask for a little bit of YAML, and this is the entire YAML. And of course, I can now call it. For that, I will need the service. So, um, in order to do this, kubectl get services. So, I get two services, and this is the VCP one. So, if I take the URI here, I can now say curl. Minus, uh, not minus, just go with that. 8080 slash hello. And I got uh, 
hello back a1 b c yes but uh what i actually wanted not hello hello rather than recordings recordings and i got title and keynote got title and keynote which also works and um, of course what i could do right now i can tell kubernetes please configure my service and this is um this can be done with my um via the configuration, microprofile configuration. So in this particular case, I can just say, what I would like to do is uh, have Quarkus, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, and uh, no, 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 Kubernetes, then env, vars, and then I think it was a uh, message and it's going to be uppercase and say, uh, hello, configurable. And on that note, what I also would like to do is I would like to add a health check. So uh, let's say health probes, health probes, Java. And um, just a very simple. And if you're interested in health probes, look at, um, watch my uh, session about microprofile fault tolerance and metrics where we actually implemented a proper life and readiness checks. So application scoped and liveness and readiness and uh, liveness and readiness, 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 and then implements health check health check and then I just say health check response up alive done so now build it clean install just build that um, because of the um, health check and what I also would like to show you is the following yeah, the image is pushed now to the registry and what we get is the following application properties. Sorry, uh, not that. Um, Kubernetes and YAML. And here we get the, here. This is the deployment config. As you can see, Quarkus created for me the entry message with the value hello configurable. And if you like, you can also add config maps. So, okay, now let's try it again. What I would like to do is to uh, apply. And uh, now it is applied and then curl it again. And, oh, I get <laughs> hello keynote because uh, the problem is uh, because of my robustness. So let's try to fix it very quickly. Um, video storage, let's say, Keynote with this configured message. This is what I would like to do. Maven clean install and cube cattle um, apply minus F in target Kubernetes, Kubernetes YAML. This should do everything at once. And I can already prepare. So now the Docker is pushed. As you can see, the push is really fast. And why this? Because of the layering. So now uh, uh, what didn't change is the basic Quarkus runtime. What all, all only changes is the upper upper layer. So it happens automatically. So now let's try that. And uh, we still get the keynote. I think I'm too fast. Oh, now it's live. So it took a few seconds until all the pods were up and running and um, it took a little bit longer probably because now we had our own liveness and readiness probes and it took longer until you know the retry mechanism kicked in so thank you for watching see you at upcoming conferences workshops ahx live or j4k conference always nice and um, yeah i hope you uh, are going to enjoy micro profile with quarkus or other runtimes like helidon great runtime um, we have uh, payara whitefly Open Liberty, Tommy, Piranha, so lots of runtime. So thank you and bye.